I know the Cavs lost last night, but I took in, I took a lot of enjoyment out of watching the Yankees lose to the Astros. I enjoyed that. I didn't even turn that on. I was running around on. my family room at the end of the game going like that. <laughs> I take that. <laughs> I put it on after our post game show last night. Yeah. I mean, I had it on during our post game show, and then I watched the end and did enjoy the Astros. It's funny. Who would have thought a couple of years ago, like you'd be rooting I, for the Astros? That's exactly what I said in that moment. I'm like, how can I root for these guys? They're cheaters. Yeah. But, but you know what? Everybody's a freaking cheater. So well, there were a lot knows? of people that were doing it. They yeah, were the poster yeah, yeah. child exactly. for it because I'm, they had I was a... glad the Yankees lost too. Yeah, it was fun. I wanted um, to get swept too because if they get swept, then we can say the Guardians won more playoff games than the Yankees. That's true. <laughs> they didn't have a playoff uh, wild card series. Yeah. Big show today. Uh, we're going to dive into the Browns off our defense versus the Ravens offense. That could be where this game is won or lost. I'm mm-hmm. afraid. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll give you some numbers. We'll try to talk about what the Browns might be thinking about doing to try to keep. Lamar Jackson in check. Also, we're going to kind of be putting Andrew Barry under the microscope. We've been talking the last week about his genius credentials. Perhaps did we stamp them too soon? Where are the Browns in terms of the players that his regime has drafted? So we're going to go through that and kind of see where the hits are, where the misses are, and which column has more. Also, we are going to start with the Cavs opening season loss in Toronto. We're going to touch on it briefly here at the start of the show. We'll get to it much more later. 108-105. I thought it was a game that they had in control. When they went to the fourth quarter, they were up eight. I felt like yeah. Toronto really hadn't done anything. Well, that, at, But that was after a bad start. Like the first 14 minutes, Well, the they second didn't look quarter good. was – if we get the second quarter that we got last night out of the right. Cavs, this is going to be a really yeah, fun they season. they looked unstoppable. But in the fourth quarter, they had a lot of problems, um, particularly yeah. down the stretch. I thought they were sloppy down the stretch. But – you got to chalk that up to Toronto's three-point shooting to start the fourth quarter. They had four of them in the first couple yeah. of minutes. And the next thing you know, an eight-point lead is a f- couple-point deficit, just like that. And then and they just Toronto's able to big close it. and physical. They, they play tough basketball. What stood out sure. most? Obviously, we didn't mention Darius Garland. Yeah, I mean, that's what had stood the last out the most eyelash. He played, I think, 12 or 13 minutes. Yeah, the two things that stood out to me real quick, guys, Darius Garland's injury, obviously, because at first it looked like nothing, and then he's getting up, and he looks like he can barely stand. Because he was very wobbly, and he uh, turns out he got scratched inside his eyelid, which, like, that seems, how the hell do you get scratched inside the eyelid? But, and the second thing that stood out to me is just, um, uh, oh, my God, I just forgot. Donovan Mitchell, couldn't think of his name yeah. for a second. Donovan Mitchell's, like, he's just electric on the court. He's and and not that watch. we hadn't seen it, but seeing it for our team, for the Cavs, that really stood out to me, Jason. I mean, I have to go Mitchell as well. Obviously, yeah. it's his Cavs debut in the way that he can see the floor. I was talking about it before the show. Yeah. His vision and just his awareness, his court awareness. And that's the difference between trying in, trying to play two ball, ball handlers together in Darius Garland and Colin Sexton and playing two ball handlers together in Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. You saw when Garland went out, Mitchell can run things. He can get guys involved. He can break down a defense, penetrate the lane, and give you one of these. Uh, so I, I think he's going to do just fine in this offense. The thing with the Cavs, and, you know, I wasn't here yesterday. I, I, I went back and watched the show, and I saw the fence riders thing. I was curious to see on the 51 question, the 51 wins, I was really – I think they're going to be right around 50. Mm-hmm. And so I said, screw it. Well, let's call it 50. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll just – I'll say yes. <laughs> but the thing that I'm really interested to see with them this year is – they won some games last year just because they played hard. They played harder than the other team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can they do that again? Because as you get older and as you get established in the league, you don't do that. You don't play that hard. You realize it's a marathon. Yeah. And veteran teams, I mean, the, the championship Cavs, that window, they played hard for like six minutes a night. And you, <laughs> could, you could visibly see it. It was like at whatever point it was, early fourth quarter, whatever, they were like, okay, we're going to play. Like, let's play. Boom. Just don't fall too far behind. They right. went through the motions for three and a half quarters. Yeah. And then they drop the, the hammer. Switch, they flipped the switch. Yeah, drop the hammer on them, get up 10 or 12, and you go back to coast. Like, I saw it night after night after night. That's just how veteran teams playing for April, May, and June play. And plus, the Cavs aren't going to sneak up on anybody this year. So, they, like, last year, a lot of teams didn't take them seriously. We saw that when Milwaukee came to town, where it was just like they just r- railroaded the Bucks, And the Bucks were like, yeah, whatever, it's – a Tuesday in Cleveland in March. Yeah, they're not going to have that this year. So I'm I'm curious to see how they respond to that. But overall, I, who cares about one loss? Toronto's a really good team too. It's tough Mitchell to win it, for it, when a team is hosting their home opener. It's tough. You've got all the energy, and this Toronto team's good. Yeah, they're yeah. they're a good group of guys. They played well. And G. Bush, what about you? Hey man, I I, I really thought to me 
when you get to see a superstar that pops up and you, we like to say, okay, well, Colin Sexton was getting 24. See, now we see what levels is, right? And you got an opportunity, opportunity to see the difference between somebody that scored a lot and somebody that's a superstar at that type of level. And Donovan Mitchell is that guy. Like, you know, you could almost see him in his mind. And when Darius Garland went out, he kind of went in his bag, this mode, well, all right, let me get the ball there. Like, and then he just started immediately working and facilitating. And it was like, this dude did that. And this is the first game of the season. Usually, people, it takes some time for somebody to be like, okay, well, do I really want to facilitate more? Or do, I don't want to rub any, you know, do I want to hand the ball to Allen and do some things? Nope, nope. He's like, no, give me the ball, move out the way. We're going to get it done. And I was encouraged by that because now, obviously, Garland was out. But guess what? Think about the think about what happens now. If those two can figure it out when they go about getting their shots, how to facilitate. And I think JB has to also figure out his rotations as to when people get breaks. Yeah. And then Mobley figuring out, okay, well, where where do I get mine in, in the mix with these guards? So I think those are the big things. But the big takeaway is is yeah, they they got a superstar. And yeah. one thing I noticed late in the game was for a while they had um Jetty in the game and not Kevin Love, like towards the end of the fourth quarter. Eventually, they brought Love back in. Yeah, I'm not a big Jetty fan. <laughs> so yeah, now, here's what I'm wondering on that. I, yeah. th- as I, there are a lot of positives. I'll get to that in a second. But this brings me to my my question: Is who's the shooter? Who's the pure shooter on this team? And I, I think as you look at what they have, they've got the rim protectors. They've got the length. They obviously have Mitchell and a dominant ball guy who can score if he needs to. But where is the, sh- the the guy that's going to come in and just be that pure shooter? Is it Kevin Love? I think Kevin's probably the closest thing they have to that right now. Mm-hmm. He's just a, a terrific three point shooter. I think shooter that might be the career. one thing that I wish they had that they don't. That maybe they can add throughout the course of the season. The other thing was I thought Allen and Mobley. It's they're they're going. It's going to be so much fun to watch them evolve together, particularly Mobley on the offensive side, but. I was disappointed when they needed stops late last night. There were too many times they weren't able to get them. Yeah. That was a little concerning to me. One of the fence rider questions was, Mikey, what was the number for uh, for Donovan Mitchell on the points over or under 25. averaging for the year? Was no, it 20, being a top, oh, it's five. top five. Top, top five. five. The one, it, during that discussion, what we talked about was, we don't know if he's still going to be a volume scorer because – he can facilitate more now. Now, I know Garland was not on the floor for much right. of the night last night, and that allowed him to get up to 31 points. But as to the question of can he still be a volume scorer and facilitate, we saw that last night. He had nine assists, 31 points. Yeah, He was everything I had hoped he would be in his debut. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he, he is, as advertised, a difference maker on this team. I'm not worried about one loss to start the season in Toronto. Um They've got a tough – they're in Chicago yeah. Saturday. Right, and, and then, then the home opener Sunday. And their home Sunday. There so. are going to be growing pains between Darius and Donovan. And what I don't want to see is my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. Right, right, yeah. That's and I, I think you'll probably see a little bit of that early on. Why, just because they want to play nice? Just, just Yeah, you're playing nice. You're trying to get a rhythm with each other. You're trying to figure out tendencies and all that. Yeah. And I just don't know if they've had enough time together to what know. What dictates that? What the defense is giving them? Yeah, I mean, As to well, who should be the scorer in, that, in any given? Yeah, moment? I think you 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 get you kind of get into a rhythm with guys. You get into a flow. You know when a guy's mm-hmm. feeling it. You let him have three or four in a row. Uh, you know, I remember LeBron and Dwayne when they first got together in Miami. It was very much my turn, your turn, my turn, yeah. your turn for quite a while, yeah. and they were really trying to figure that out. I think it'll be faster here because Darius is a natural point guard and he's used to getting people involved, and and Donovan obviously is a playmaker. Uh, so I, I I don't think it'll take too too long. But I would expect some growing pains early as these two learn how to play together and play off of each other. You know, a couple of things. Um, I was talking with your pal Joe Varden this morning. Yeah. Good buddy. And uh, first of all, I asked him if we if he's uh, working on getting McMenamin back to Cleveland <laughs> since the Lakers are basically going to be useless this year. Um, he Get said the he's, band back he's together. He's in the L.A. life. Yeah, so he, it's, Dave it's, is not coming back to late. Cleveland. It's too late. But he I, is I, a, ESPN yes. tells me he is. Yes, <laughs> that's true. All right, that's true. true. Trust me, I've yeah. talked to a lot. I've to, I'm friends with a lot of people that live yeah. that life. That's, yeah. true. that's true. So he one said, of the reasons I'm glad I am where I am. Yeah, you're in a good spot. <laughs> we talked about like Mobley having to be the best player to win a title, right? We've talked about that, and he said that that JB said, and I hadn't heard this that well Mobley could be the best player on the team even if he's not the best scorer mm-hmm. on the team, right? Like this. 
Does he, when we say Mobley's got to be the best player for them to win the championship, does he have to be a 20 plus point scorer to be that? I think he, I think he will be. I don't know if he has to be, but I, like, I, I don't the, think he's that far he's right not. now from he's being not. that guy. Right. When they drafted him, I said he's the number one cornerstone foundation piece on a championship team. I was talking to a scout before that draft who said they better hope and pray Mobley's there when they when they're drafting because he's exactly what they need yeah. and by god that was uh right. totally true and he's just he can do so much he can do everything he can guard he can put the ball on the floor he right. can shoot so i think it's, it's a couple it's, of threes like right off the bat yeah yesterday. and they're they want that surprised me they yeah. want to see that they want to see that range develop and and you know i said before if he becomes a three he's now a transcendent talent I, I truly believe I sure. that. Uh, yeah, right. 100%. But they ad- are adamant they don't want him playing the three on a 48-minute or, you know, f- All the time. Yeah, because Well, there's going to be other times during the games where they need him to do other things. Right, and they don't want him guarding KD and Giannis for 36 minutes yeah, a night. Right. You, you know that's what I was dumb. watching? Um, I always watch it in the summer. I stay watching, like, you know, they, there's these camps and different things that the players do, these open runs. So, uh, a lot of the guys just – like the whole Toronto Raptors team plays um, in this little, like, it's a gym where, you know, uh, I think his name is Rico Hines. He has all kind of guys on the West Coast. It's always like Harden and Westbrook, Durant, all these top notch guys are there. So the Raptors whole team was in this thing, like playing as a team. I thought that was crazy. But to get back to Evan Mobley, um, he was doing this open run in a different gym, and they had, uh, I think it was Boogie Cousins. It was him, and it, it was Durant. And him and Durant were guarding each other the whole game. And so he's guarding Durant full, Durant full court. And, you know, it was crazy because... This was on TV? Yeah, this is on YouTube. Uh, yeah, this is on YouTube. So, okay. you, yeah, you, you got to have no life and go and, and have a sleeping <laughs> disorder to watch it. Like, he, you're like, dog, what, he's like, it's on TV? Nah, this is on yeah. YouTube at 3 in the morning. And they were going hard. And YouTube's the yeah. future of all television programs. Damn right it is. As we're that, finding out. Subscribe to the Ultimate Gleeless War Show because that's how you can do it. How do you subscribe, YouTube Mikey? for the win. How do you, you hit subscribe? Hit the button, hit the subscribe button, ring okay. the bell. Do what you got to do. G. Bush, <laughs> let's not let's not crap on YouTube, man. We live on YouTube. If, if you the don't place. know we live how other to subscribe, ask a young person in your life to <laughs> yeah, show you how to how. do it. They'll yeah. figure it. That's my what mom they're was like, Listen, the kids are watching YouTube. My, yeah. mom is, my mom is still confused. She just figured out this week that my podcast is on YouTube. <laughs> just uh, She was just listening to the audio version. Well, that's a bad it. job on you. You can I just explain assumed it. she knew it. Or my wife, my wife talks to her every day, so I assume my wife had told her. You can watch it on, I watched the show last night on my TV in my living room after the Cavs game. I yeah. Up, I want to see you guys. That's what's nice with the Roku app. Yep. It's, we're on Fire Stick too, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are easy, they're yeah. easy ways to get it to the big screen. You can, if, if you're really tech savvy, you can, you know, screen image. Screen mirror. You know, yeah, screen yeah. mirror yeah. to your to your TV. Uh, let's wrap it up. We're going to come back to the Cavs. We're yeah. going to talk about it Wait, a little I, bit. I got one point on the oh, Cavs okay, go ahead, I got, I got to make here. And I said on the post game show mm-hmm. last night, and I agree with Jason, it's going to take a little time for Garland and Mitchell to play off each other. Sure. It almost mirrors our show. Go back to our first discussion, and G. Bush couldn't figure out when to hop in a discussion when Bull and Jay were going back and forth. Sure. Bull couldn't figure out when to lay out and let G finish a thought. But fast forward <laughs> 113 okay. shows, and now they have the chemistry to know when to hop in, when to yeah. let it go. Any, any pairing of elite talents like we've assembled here or That's like true. Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. It's not going to be perfect cohesion at first, but when you see the talent, you can see the future. Yeah. And the future of those two when they figure out how to play together is damn scary Pretty for fun. the rest of the NBA. I, I, the, the, my, I, as I said, my concern is the lack of a pure shooter. In the fourth what so if you look at what was the difference in the game, because it went back and forth, and then the Cavs established a nice lead at halftime and had an eight-point lead going into the third, so they clearly lost it in the fourth. The, the Raptors were just burying three-pointers. And right. that's how you eliminate an eight-point lead in two minutes. I don't know, are, are we equipped to do that with, with the roster that we have? I don't know. I think so. I hope so. I think so. I hope so. Well, let's see well, how Chad it hit the threes yesterday, but I know you don't like him. I'm not a, I'm, he's a great guy. He's a yeah. great guy. I don't know if I want him on the floor with the game on the line. No, I don't. I want Kevin Love out. There. Well, you're going to need your three-point shooter, whoever, that, whoever emerges to be the shooter is going to need to be on the floor a lot in crunch time. Yeah. In games when you're down more than one or two possessions, you need that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe it's a, that's the way the league is constructed now? Yeah, for Jason, sure. Jason, do you believe that the that they haven't because Joe suggested this this morning that they that they maybe haven't gone in the for the final pieces whether it's Jay Crowder, whether it's a, a just a shooter, spot-up shooter that because they don't think Mobley's quite there yet 
No, they're in. They want to wait one more year before they go over the luxury no. tax and stuff well, like that. Well, I think they want. They do want to wait, yeah. and they're really positioned well with the luxury tax. And it's listen. I've been as hard on Dan as anybody in town, but he will spend. It's not a matter yes, of Dan no doesn't doubt. want to spend. Right. It's a matter of starting the repeat offender clock right. because this team is really young. And that repeat offender is no joke. Like Joe Lacob in Golden State is probably the owner on, only in, only owner in the league who could pull this off as long as the Warriors have. Yeah. Even Dan kind of flips. And they're a facing bit. issues. And they are big, big time. issues. Yeah, they're probably going to lose Draymond Green. Yes. But but even Dan flinched when it became to the repeat offender during the LeBron era. Well, it gets to be so punitive. It's unbelievable. So and, and it should it, be. Is it, it two to one dollars? It's at, I, at the highest point. I think it's approaching that. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look, but I it's 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 a lot. It's exorbitant. And when you factor in Mobley's going to get a max Darius already is on a on a super max. Basically, Mobley's going to get one of those as well. Right. The, the contract Donovan has, uh, you know, Jared Allen's 20 million a year. So once you once that repeat offender clock hits, that's when you start missing pieces. So you want to stay so out of that territory as long as yes, you can. Yes, you want to kick the can down the road on the luxury tax, the the initial luxury tax, because that's gonna that's coming a few yeah. years later. It's days like these where I'm and discussions like this where I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I you know the nuances and the ins and outs of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, way more than the average fan. I think way more than all of us. But and I, it's, it's good for for. Context, but I think going back to what you were asking originally, I think they want to see what they have. Right. They don't know and get that playoff experience. I mean, they, they don't really they, have. They lost Larry Markinen, which I was not a huge Markinen fan as a three, but he was a good shooter. He was a yep. key piece of that team. So you remove that. Abaji, which they never really saw, but he was a, he was the By shooter the way, you're talking about. Did he even play last night? I didn't look. I don't know. Uh, I don't think he played. Well. I mean, he, not, he, not, he was a low, you know, not that proves anything. He was anything. a low lottery pick. Yeah. Uh, Colin wasn't really a factor last year because he was hurt. But I think that they want to see what they have. Makes sense. They want to see how Donovan yeah. fits. And that's going to take a while. And it will take a little while. Yeah. But, and plus, they don't have any assets. Like, they have nothing left to trade, really. They went, yeah, right. they yep. went all in on Donovan, and rightfully so. So I think that they just want to take a look and see what they have. That's a good point. What do they have? They have nothing. nothing. Do they have anything to trade? No. Very, very little. But you're not allowed to complain about asset. that bowl. No, I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> because you were the one that was saying, I don't care about draft picks. Come on. No. Come on. They, tr- they used it all for Mitchell. It was smart. No, it was smart. I, w- I would have done the same thing. Yes. Right. But there comes a time when, and, and I think the Browns, as we pivot to the Browns, are kind of in that space already. The Browns are looking at their draft ca- uh, capital moving forward. And it's going to be very difficult to get well, top-notch they, great talent they don't out of have the draft. ones, but they have that, a well, lot that's of where, but, picks. But that's where the surefire guys sure, are. Well, there yeah, are even misses in the ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, now, now, that doesn't mean you can't go in and get stars in the six and sevens, mm-hmm. but top five. they haven't done that, really. Well, once you're again, what, well, they haven't. Uh, well, yeah, no, they haven't, and they haven't consistently for a decade. No. I mean, they really haven't gotten now, a lot of Now, if you're the Ravens or if you're Panthers. some of these organizations who, yeah. the Patriots, you find unhidden, you know, the, these hidden gems in the five, six, and sevens, yeah. you can move your but ones and twos with But the Patriots haven't confidence. done that as well in no, recent not, years. No, not lately. They have not. That's and that's why point. they've gone downhill, and that's part of the reason Brady be, wanted to leave. Before, You've got to hit on the middle round. Yes. You have we, to. Before we hit the Browns, I, yeah. Jason, were you a little apprehensive Isaac Okoro didn't score yesterday. He was he was yeah. a non-factor. <laughs> no, that was played 12 minutes. And I I mean I said on the show by that, yeah. I said on the show weeks ago I thought he was the starting 3. That's kind of the message yeah. I got from the organization right. was he was going to be the starting 3. I think Karras is overkill. I was going to save this for when we came back to the Cavs. <laughs> yeah. I think Karras is a little bit overkill. I think they need him coming off the bench. Yeah. Okoro gave Okoro gave him nothing. I know. Nothing. Yeah. So that's if if he could just be enough of a threat of a three-point shooter to that's, tell him go stand over there and, just and wait. Yes, yeah. that's it. That's all they need him to do. Defend your butt off, and then go stand over there and wait for the ball. If he could just do that, he would be such an important piece of Karis, this team. Yeah, Karis I, LeBert I was playmaking yesterday, huh? He, that's there were he, he had moments. He's healthy. He's he healthy. had moments. Yeah, he looked good. But I think him and Kevin Love running the second unit. Yeah. And you're cooked. And when you bring Rubio back, and mm. I would I would temper expectations on Rubio. Just coming off the such yeah. a December, severe knee January, injury. January, what do we think? January, probably yeah. January. But when you have Rubio, when you say temper expectations, do you mean on 
on the timing of his return no, or I what mean, we get from him when he comes back? What you get from him when he comes really? back. Yeah, I think even even I've had people at the Cavs <laughs> say, listen, this is a really traumatic knee injury. ACLs, normally it's year two when you see a full recovery because everyone saw Ricky just cooking guys last year. Yeah. And you think, well, he's going to come back and be that guy again. I'm Probably not sure not. that's the case, but – if when you have even just him being on the floor, he meant so much to this team last year. Yeah. If you have Rubio, Karras, and Kevin Love as your second unit, that's an incredible right. second unit. So they just need to find that piece that allows them to move Karras onto the bench because right. I, I think right. he fits this team best yeah. coming off the bench. Great.